Hello and welcome to Dingo's Ate My Podcast. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. And this week we are discussing the episode Just Rewards. Uh, so this episode originally aired October 8th, 2003, attracting approximately 5.24 million viewers. Alrighty, so let us start off with the number one song in America this week, Dave. Hmm. Again, with last week, with how many particular things we ran through, I can't specifically remember which one was the one from last week. So last week was uh, Shake Ya Tail Feather by Nellie P. Diddy and Murphy Lee. Yeah, I wouldn't have surprised if that one stuck around. There's nothing else that I can immediately think of that could supposedly top it. It was actually topped by a song called Baby Boy by Beyonce featuring Sean Paul. Yeah, that tracks. Oh, I just saw what song comes out at the end of the year, and that is going to be stuck in our heads for the rest of our lives. Anyway, <laughs> you won't be saying that when you find out what the song is. Uh, yeah, okay. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, number one film in America this week, Dave. Film wise. You've definitely seen this film, and I'm going to assume you like it. Because I feel like it's Radio. a movie you would enjoy. Radios, but I'm trying to think. 2003 comedy. Curiosity is it an animated film? It is not. It is a live action film starring Jack Black. This might be a little bit off the mark, but is this the School of Rock? It is School of Rock. Yeah, because it was either that or it was one of the other supposed date movies that he would supposedly be in. But no, that kind of tracks. Yes. Uh, so it is School of Rock with $19.6 million at the box office on its opening weekend. Always neat. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's fine. It's not really my jam, but I know that like a lot of people really like it. So, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, moving along to video games. So, uh, October 13th, if you had a GameCube, you could pick up a little game that everybody seems to like, but I'm not too keen on. Uh, Kirby Air Ride. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, October 14th, if you had a PS2, you could pick up Jack 2. Ah, yes, because that is the funds. Uh, I don't think I've ever played any of the Jack and Daxter games. Well, it's interesting. And it's a particular game series to sort of play through if you want to get an uh, understanding of um, the game company uh, Naughty Dog's kind of upbringings before they got into the Uncharted series. Yeah, it's one of those franchises that I've always been interested in, but I've never actually... Never actually dived into. I played, uh, well, what was the other PlayStation like platformer that they had? Ratchet and Clank. Uh, yes, Ratchet and Clank was one of the other big ones. Yeah, I played some of the Ratchet and Clank games and I liked those. And then, of course, the trifecta of it would be the Sly Cooper series. Yes, okay, yeah. I, I've never played those either, actually. Uh, also, on October 14th, if you're a PC gamer, you could pick up this little game called Max Payne 2 The Fall of Max Payne. Yeah, because that was a thing that happened. Did you ever play any of the Max Payne games? I think maybe just one. I can't remember which one specifically, but like started the game and tried little bits of it, but it's just kind of eh. Yeah, um, I tried playing Max Payne. I didn't get into it at the time. I tried playing it a few years ago, and it does not hold up uh, for a yeah. modern player. Yeah. I, would, I really wish that those games would get like... Uh, like a Resident Evil 2 style remake where it's like it's the same game just modernized. Yeah. Well, yeah, in all sorts of cases. So it's not really now, but it's kind of the case of what they're most likely going to be doing with the Resident Evil 4 remake that they're going to be bringing up in comparison to when it was first released. Yeah, isn't it kind of like a different story now or something? Well,. Have you played through Resident Evil 4 recently? I've never played through Resident Evil 4. Because <laughs> <laughs> on the one hand, you playing through it, you probably wouldn't mind it. But you also kind of think of, oh, that's not going to work nowadays, is it? Okay, so Resident Evil 4 to me, because I've seen gameplay of it and stuff. It always seemed to me like it's the most 
may, okay, maybe not the most, but at the time it was probably the most bonkers Resident Evil game. Starting to get there, but one of the big things is we never realized that poor Leon would be so quippy. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I think I started playing the game once and got mad at the controls and then gave up. Yeah, it's also kind of the case of if you start on the one, it's one control set, and then it went to everything else. Yes. Uh, so, uh, also on October 14th, if you had a PS2, you could pick up a little game called Mega Man X7. Ah, uh, yes. Though, Re yeah. Did you ever play the Mega Man games? Uh, not super, super knowledgeable with the X series. Okay. Uh, well, also on October 14th on the Game Boy Advance, you could pick up Mega Man Zero 2. Yes, because I'm also not very knowledgeable with the <laughs> Zero series, but that was also a series. It sure was. Um, so, for other games, we have uh, on October 14th on the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox, you could pick up The Haunted Mansion. Yes, because that was a movie that released around the time, and it was like, oh man, we gotta make a video game tie into it. Yeah, um, did you ever play this game? No. Okay, yeah, neither did I, but I, I'm like, I I remember always seeing the box, like the box in the EB games, and never picking it up, because I'm like, that movie wasn't very good, the game will be worse. And it's also kind of the case of, the only real thing they could probably do is just make a walkabout. And how fun is that as a game? I mean, you say that, but I have enjoyed some walking simulators. True, but it's also kind of the case that it's off of a bad movie. So what is their source material they're going to be taking from? Oh, yeah, no. it Like, to be fair, the game didn't get horrible reviews. So, Understandable. like, it got, like... On Metacritic, the GameCube and PS2 are at 69 out of 100, and the Xbox is a 71. So it's not like yeah. the game's crap. It's like it's fine. But aside from that, it's not going to completely rock your socks. No, it's one of those games where it'd be like, eh, it's fine. But uh, yeah, so that was uh, what came out uh, for video games for this week. Oh, boy. Uh, so now we get into the episode. So, alrighty, there uh, we go. Uh, nearly three weeks later, Spike saves. Oh, sorry. Nearly three weeks earlier, Spike saves the world by collapsing the Hellmouth and is buried and is uh, burned up in the process. Now he finds himself suddenly in Angel's office at Wolfram and Hart, with no idea how he got there. Upon seeing Angel, his first instinct is, is to attack him, <laughs> only for it to be revealed that Spike is now non-corporeal. Uh, Spike is very confused. Uh, Spike is very confused and wonders why the group are now working for Wolfram at Heart. He asks where Buffy is uh, and wants to find her, but Angel tells him that she is in Europe and that he has no intention of letting him see her. Spike taunts him, asking if he is going to stop them, both remembering what happened in Sunnydale. This soon leads both vampires uh, in a heated, jealous argument with each other, uh, which is soon broken up. So we find out that Buffy has gone to Europe for some reason. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm wondering, and I'm, I don't know if you'll have an answer for this, but do you expect that we'll see Buffy pop up in this season? Because no, I'm again just with the understanding of possibly what was probably going on at the time, and just from that line, that yeah, it wouldn't. I wouldn't really expect that she would be within the series, at least to my understanding. But okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's totally fair. Um, yeah. But again, I'd be surprised if she managed to at least show up in an episode, either as quick little prompt sort of thing or a guest star sort of thing, but probably maybe only once or twice but i wouldn't be surprised if she wasn't part of the series uh so i'm gonna give you a minor spoiler uh she will but if i remember correctly it's only like archival footage like it's nothing new okay so it's nothing like she actually comes on to the show no she's not going to become like a cast member or anything no 
Um, okay. Uh, uh, being analyzed in the lab, it soon becomes clear that Spike isn't a ghost as he has no ectoplasm, but is still, uh, but is still visible, registers brainwave activity, and is producing heat, and is still a vampire. <laughs> Spike with brainwave activity, that's shocking. Haha, <laughs> bringing in uh, Angel's quips and whatnot, but it's interesting, but what would you categorize something like that as? Um, I mean, I think technically he's a non-corporeal ghost. Like he's, I think he's technically a ghost. He's just like a non-corporeal being. Okay, yeah, just simple sort of thing. But there's no concrete, specific word for what exactly he is. He's still ghost. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I I don't know if they, they definitely don't bring up like a specific term for it in this episode, and I feel like they don't ever. Yeah. Uh, if memory serves, but I, I can't say for certain. Uh, Fred notes that Spike is definitely something mystical, and Wesley theorizes that Spike's essence must have somehow gotten into the amulet when he burned up in the Hellmouth. Angel notes that the amulet was supposedly uh, buried in the Hellmouth, so he wants to know how it got there. Fred wonders if Spike has some higher purpose and was sent by the powers that be. Spike thinks that he should have just died in the Hellmouth since he helped save the world, and that the power should be allowed to bring him back against his will. Spike suddenly starts to fade, then disappears completely. Yeah. A minute later, he rematerializes and blames Angel for everything that's happened. Since Angel uh, brought the amulet to Sunnydale in the first place, he thinks that Angel chickened out from using it himself and left town, abandoning the woman he claims to love. Uh, Angel argues that Buffy made him leave so that he didn't have a choice. Spike adds that uh, he doesn't have a choice in what he is now and doesn't care about destiny and atonement like Angel does. He brings up the fact that he has a soul, which surprises the others. Uh, Wesley asks Angel... Uh, asks why Angel didn't mention it, and he answers that it wasn't worth mentioning. Spike says that Angel doesn't want him in his special ex exclusive club of sold vampires, currently having two members. Uh, Angel shoots back that Spike isn't uh, even really in the world, which, I mean, technically... Yeah, decent points, but... Yeah, just those random videos that I randomly come across surfing online of, oh, hey, here's these two characters acting like an old married couple old married couple oh that could be the entirety of season five though david yeah i'm gonna yeah. warn you right now angel and spike are gonna bicker like an old married couple a lot in this season which is completely understandable with their history <laughs> there's oh there's gonna be some good stuff this season mm -hmm. Uh, Angel heads towards the lobby and is joined by Spike. Angel denies that he had anything to do with what happened to him. Spike calls him a sellout, noting that one of his one of his perks is that Angel has <laughs> Spike's uh, uh, ex-tumble the littlest vampire fetching coffee, which is a great way to refer to Harmony. Uh, he says that fighting uh, from the inside of the belly of the beast might mean that the gang are getting digested. Angel isn't can isn't in control and doesn't know it. He suddenly spots a Glaxor beast, which Angel fights. Uh, Spike can't join in because he's non-corporeal. Uh, Angel breaks the demon's neck, then learns from Harmony that he was supposed to meet with it to negotiate with its clan. Yeah. Also the wonderful case of fixing those reflexes of a monster coming into your building isn't a threat. It's supposedly your business meeting. Yes. Um... Uh, Gunn arrives and tells Angel that it might be okay since uh, Glaxors respect people who take a strong opening position. And that's a very strong opening position. Uh, he explains that when Wolfram and Hart gave him knowledge of the law, they put, in some no they put in some knowledge of demon laws from other dimensions. Harmony tries to chat with Spike, but he ignores her and walks away. She calls him a slayer-loving freak under her breath. Yeah, when she learned all the particular information about what Spike's been up to, she wasn't too happy. No, not so much. Um, Angel and Gunn head to Angel's office and discuss employees Gunn has had to fly, fire. Uh, Angel arrives, or sorry, Spike arrives, noting that the building is huge, and Angel tries to kick him out so he can continue his meeting. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't care. Ah, uh, Spike is making me, it just, oh, Spike. Uh, Gunn warns that the fired employees are going to fight back. Then he says that he's going to have to deal with one now. A, gang, a guy named Novak comes in and asks why Angel shut down the Internment Acquisitions Department, uh, a.k.a. Grave Robbing. 
the division is under contract to provide bodies to a guy named Magnus Hainsley. Angel tells Novak to get rid of Hainsley as a client. As Novak leaves, Spike tells him that he doesn't uh, that he doesn't have to take that from Angel. Angel kicks him out, and Spike tells him that he doesn't want to spend his afterlife this way anyway. Mm-hmm. Which, again, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Later, Angel talks with Wesley, telling him that he could be in Spike's position right now. Uh, Angel, or sorry, uh, Wolfram and Hart give him, gave him the amulet, so they must have expected him to use it and wind up where Spike is. Wesley notes that they handed over the fern to him, and Angel wonders what the senior partners are up to. Spike returns and reveals that he tried to leave, but something physically kept him inside of Los Angeles. Wesley says that that makes sense, since the amulet is, from, is Wolfram and Hart's property, and Spike is tied to it. Uh, Spike is annoyed that he can't leave, and Angel is annoyed that Spike is going to keep haunting him. Because, you know, what else is Spike going to do? <laughs> of course. Which, I mean, honestly, this sounds like a great setup for a sitcom. Harmony tells Angel that Novak is back, and, the, and two men walk in holding buckets full of him. Because <laughs> he is now slime. Yeah... Uh, Spike smirks and tells the gang that they are doing a great job. That night, Angel tells Harmony that he wants to keep quiet about Novak for a while. Gunn brings him Ainsley's file, announcing that he's a rich sorcerer with shares in Wolfram and Hart and a lot of connections. Angel determines that he is a necromancer. Wesley clarifies that he has power over the dead, which is why Wolfram and Hart keep giving him bodies. Um, Angel returns to his office, where he uh, tries and fails to kick Spike out of his chair. He decides that he's going to respond to to Hainsley's bucket message in person, even though Wesley advises him not to. Before Angel leaves, Gunn gives him something to really hurt Hainsley, but we don't know what it is. Uh, Angel heads to the garage and uh, gets into a Dodge Viper. Spike is suddenly there, having guessed Angel would pick that car. Uh, Spike is starting to enjoy the possibility of haunting Angel for eternity. Uh, He could drive Angel crazy, and Angel wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Which, I mean, that is very much in keeping with Spike's character. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Angel moves to a different car, but Spike is there too, wanting to go on a road trip with his old buddy Angel. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. Uh, They drive to Hainsley's house, where Angel tells the butler to interrupt whatever Hainsley is doing. Angel and Spike uh, find his showroom, where he poses bodies. Meanwhile, Hainsley is in his workshop, chanting over a body as a demon chants near chats nearby he puts the demon's essence into the woman and is interrupted by the butler who says that there are men from wolfram and hart there to see him hainsley tells him just kill them uh back in the showroom spike says that the bodies uh are there are lucky since no one's forced them back into the world against their will the butler returns with knives but angel quickly buries a teaspoon in the butler's forehead spike is disappointed in angel's method of killing the butler and they start arguing this will be a common theme throughout the the rest of the season yeah. Spike says that Angel has all this uh, material stuff, but Spike saved the world and doesn't get anything. Angel replies that Spike asked for a soul, but Angel didn't. Angel worked for a hundred years to come to terms with infinite remorse, but after a few weeks in a basement, Spike was fine. Spike then disappears again. Uh, there we are. Uh, Angel breaks into Hainsley's workshop. The woman Hainsley put the demon essence into tries to leave, but Angel punches her out. He tells Hainsley that he's cutting off his supply of bodies. Hainsley quickly takes control of Angel's body and freezes him. Spike reappears, telling Hainsley that he can do whatever he wants to Angel. Uh, Hainsley tells Angel that he could kill him right now without even using a stake, but that would be insulting to the senior partners, who seem to have a plan for Angel. Angel calls Gunn and gives him the go-ahead to freeze all of Hainsley's bank accounts and turn over his books to the IRS. Hainsley threatens to sue, but Angel isn't worried. On the way out of the house, Spike taunts Angel for using legal methods to get Hainsley rather than violence. He disappears and doesn't rematerialize until Angel Angel has already left the house. Hainsley offers to restore Spike's freedom, destiny, and the power of choice. He can have a corporeal body again. In exchange, Spike has to do something for, uh, for him, but he immediately expresses willingness to hurt Angel, because again, it's Spike. Yeah, pretty much his go-to. He's like, do I get to hurt Angel? Done. Uh, Back at Wolfram and Hart, Gunn assures Angel that he's taking care of things concerning Hainsley. They share the good news uh, with Wesley and Fred. 
but add that Hainsley is going to fight back. The discussions turn, turn to Spike. Wesley says that the only way to get rid of him for good is to basically exercise him. Spike returns to the firm, and Harmony slams him for acting like he's better than her. Spike overhears the group discussing him and saying that they're going to kill him. Sort of. Wesley thinks that sending Spike to the afterlife is merciful, since he can't really do anything on Earth. Angel doesn't care about mercy, he just wants to get it over with. <laughs> Which again, that eh, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Wesley tells him that the amulet is protected and normally can't be destroyed, but the magic won't work on hallowed ground, such as in a church or a cemetery. Only Fred objects to the plan uh, to unilaterally terminate Spike. Uh, Angel uh, decides to sleep on the decision. Spike shows up in his bedroom, which <laughs> is not something that Angel wanted. Uh, Angel tells him that he can haunt him during business hours, but have to, has to stay out of Angel's personal space, which seems fair. Yeah. Spike says that he overheard the group talking about him and reveals that Hainsley tried to make a deal with him. He decided that he wants Angel to end his, end his life. They head to the cemetery with the amulet and say their goodbyes. Angel picks up an urn uh, and starts to smash the amulet but winds up hitting himself in the head instead. Ainsley appears and Angel realizes that he is taking control of his body again. He knocks Angel out and Spike's and Spike blasts him for taking as long to get there. Spike refuses to be used by Hainsley, but Hainsley says he'll have to. After he's done, Spike will get his body back. Hainsley takes Angel to his workshop. Angel wakes up and says that the senior partners won't be happy when they realize that Angel is missing. Hainsley tells him that he, he won't be missing. He'll turn up again with Spike inside his body controlling him. Spike uh, contemplates the things that he can do with Angel's body. Hain, uh, Hainsley starts the essence entering spell, but it doesn't work. Spike stops inside uh, Hainsley, so Angel is able to fight against him. Angel decapitates uh, Hainsley, Hainsley, and Spike reappears, upset that he couldn't keep hitting Angel inside of the body. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, those last few punches yeah. were you? Yeah, he died as soon as he hit the table. <laughs> uh, it turns out that Hainsley's been dead for a while, and Spike was just taking out some of his anger on Angel, which again... Makes perfect sense for his character. So true. Uh, back at Wolfram and Hart, Angel uh, tells Wesley that Spike came to Angel with his plan to defeat uh, Hainsley. Wesley says that Spike should have run the plan by everyone first. Angel says that Spike isn't good at sharing, which that's an understatement. So true. Spike pays Fred a visit in the science lab, noting that she's the science queen and might be able to help him. He says that he's slipping and feels like he's trying to balance between two places. She says... Uh, that must be what uh, what it's like when he disappears. Spike tells her that he's seen what's in hell, and that uh, tells her that he's seen what's in hell, and that heroes don't go there. He's scared, so he asks Fred for help. And that is where the episode ends. Indeed. So, what do you think of this episode, Dave? Uh, it was so fun. Just case of dealing with a particular person that deals with dead bodies. It was fairly good, though. It was kind of a case of, this seems a little bit like that one Wolverine movie with Magneto in it, where, yeah, Wolverine fighting against Magneto is not exactly a fair fight. I'm not sure which one you mean. I think it was one of the X-Men movies. Yeah, I, I just can't... I haven't seen those movies in so long, I can't remember which one that is. But yeah, yeah, that... Well, yeah. And just the case of uh, Spike within the episode, just so much fun quipping with angel and especially about that one scene when he's leaving the house after freezing the assets spikes chatting with him he disappears and angel's like oh thank god <laughs> yeah they have they have very good chemistry on screen together it's it's just so good mm -hmm. uh okay so uh we get at the beginning of this episode we get a flashback to chosen which we where we see spike you know do the whole sacrifice thing yes uh and we get you know, I guess technically Buffy does appear in this episode. Yeah, technically. F film footage. Yes. Um, we find out that Buffy is currently in Europe. Um, and we, uh, if you read the comics, we'll get more, you'd get more into that, but it won't really come up in the series a whole lot. Yeah. Um, and I actually have never read the comics. I should probably give them a go at some point. Uh, this is also James Marster's 100th appearance in the Buffyverse. So, right. good for him. Uh, his first appearance, obviously, was Schoolhard in Buffy. For those of you who maybe didn't watch Buffy, you should go and watch Buffy because it's great. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this episode, like we said, kind of primarily focuses on introducing the character of Spike to the audience for Angel, which probably would mostly know who he is. But in case there are people who don't, uh, they kind of get an introduction to Spike here. Yeah, yeah. Well, kind of a case of this side of Spike. They yeah. didn't really get a chance to see the start of Spike within the Buffy series and more how he was to how he sort of got to this point. Yeah, we get we get goofy Spike. We don't get murderous Spike. No. Which, uh, murderous Spike, woo, okay. Um, so, okay. Did you get, there's a reference here in this episode to a particular superhero. Did you get it? Or did you, do you know what it might be? Uh, huh? I'll give you, I'll give you a hint. This episode is co-written by Ben Edlund. Or Edlond. I don't know if that name means anything to you. No, not immediately. Okay. Uh, he will go on to write a few more episodes of, um angel actually i think technically he wrote an episode previous to this yeah he wrote one near the end of season four but that's not important um he is he is the creator of uh the character the tick okay oh you're familiar with the tick i am mostly from the animated series that happened some time ago okay and do you know what the the ticks um uh battle cry is not just food. Yeah, exactly. That's why somebody gets killed with a spoon in this episode. Or almost killed with a spoon. Well, no, I'd say killed. Like, it was enough to sort of do damage. Yeah. But as soon as you took it out, it's like, oh, no, you sealed your contract good, sir. And then... Tch, and yeah, that was that was meant to be, like, a little, like, in-joke for fans that knew who, like, the guy was and who the tick is. Awesome. I love that kind of stuff. Okay. So uh, let us go on to international titles. So uh, a lot of them end up being just reward, just rewards, something like that. We're going to skip over those. Okay. Uh, so in Finnish, it translates as exorcist. Yeah. Which, I mean, not really. Uh, in German, it translates as the deep abyss. Yeah. And in Hungarian, it translates as the necromancer, which, I mean, that's at least accurate. Yeah, that's true. Alrighty. So, now, uh, if there's nothing else about this episode, next week we will be discussing the episode Unleashed. Mm. <laughs> okay, so, uh, there's a very brief uh, kind of teaser for this one which is angel tries to protect a woman who's been bitten and transformed into a werewolf <laughs> from evil restaurant restaurateurs who want to turn her into an exotic dish stop working yes so we're getting vamp or we're getting werewolves back, but they are going to be food allegedly. Uh, <laughs> on the one hand, this isn't the worst thing that's happened to werewolves, but on the other hand, uh, it had to happen to something. But why did it have to happen to them? <laughs> yes. Why it, couldn't they made some sort of thing like a were cat? Um, let's just say this episode from memory is. is is going to be quite good, and Angel is going to, uh, he's going to meet someone in this episode. Radios. So, um, it'll, it'll be a good time. So, until next time, I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. <laughs>